Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 18 for our Ninja Platformer tutorial series. This series is made possible by the students who support me by purchasing my Godot courses on my website. There will be a link in the description that you can check out if you are interested in those. And actually, I'm, I'm going to put a bonus link in the description to take you to a free course. Uh, it's a small mini course but it's absolutely free. You just sign up for my email list and you can join that to learn how to animate a character in eight directions using an animation tree. Okay, in this video, we're going to be fixing something first and then we're going to be adding player health. So let's look at fixing the first issue. Remember when I introduced our particles and I added the first particle script and then I removed the reset uh, or restart function that was right here because I was like oh they must have fixed it well there's a problem there is currently a memory leak in our game if we run the game and we select rem the remote tab here we can see the nodes inside of our game as they are. You can see I can even select the player here. We can see these two enemy cannons. This is a great way to identify potential memory leaks by using this remote uh, tab over here while the game is running. Now if we come and we attack this, see? Um, a sparks particle is created and an impact particle is created. And we can't see them but they're still over here in our scene. And if we attack both of these enemies, uh-oh, we're starting to get a lot of particles and these particles are never being freed. Now the reason they're not being freed is because of what I described earlier. We are connecting to the finished signal on our burst particles. But because we're setting, uh, because we're setting one shot to tr one shot to true in code right here, it's not ever actually emitting finished. And so it's never actually freeing it. But if we put the uh, restart function back in here, then finished will emit. And you can see on the remote scene tab, attack here, the particles are created and then they are removed and see that happen in real time. Let's give our player some health. Come into our player right here up at the top and create stats export. Export our stats. Stats. That player can have some stats and we only need health here. We'll give them, give them four health I guess do three or four let's do three and then inside of our play player here we can connect in the ready function we can connect to the no health signal on stats stats no health connect and then we'll just say Q free just destroy the player when health is all the way down and then we can come into where we're uh, taking a hit, right? So here's our hit state, but where do we actually transition into the hit? That's up here when we have hurtbot, hurtbox.hurt.connect. Right here, this is where we would say stats bot health minus equals one. Well, let's do minus equals other hitbox dot damage. That way we're taking the correct amount of damage based on how much damage is dealt from the, uh, the enemy. Some enemies might deal more. These, the damage is defaulting to one. So now we should be able to take three hits. One, two, and then the third one will die. Boom. Now the camera jumped kind of weird there, right? And it's going to be even worse if we die from the other cannon this and that's because the camera is connected to our player and then we're destroying the player which destroys the camera as well 
let's actually take this camera node right here. I'm going to do control X, come into the player and then do control V and that just copy pastes or cut pastes our camera onto our player, uh, into the player scene. Did it move the player when I did that? Or has the player always started out in that position? I think they've always started there. We've got the same camera. I thought, did our camera not have any offset or something? It definitely needs a little bit of offset. It looks like, yeah, we'll give it a Y offset of say 32, or sorry, negative 32. That way the player can see below them some. I want them to be able to see more actually. Two minus 16. That puts them about in the center of the camera. Uh, that feels pretty good right there. Okay, so now what are we gonna do? Well, we want to be able to make sure that the, the camera doesn't get destroyed with the player. And there's a new function inside of Godot 4 that we can use to do this. So first we need to get access to our camera. So I'm gonna click on it, drag, hold control, drop, get access to our camera. And then what we're gonna do is we're already connecting to no health and we're, we're freeing the player when there's no health left. We're gonna do some other stuff here. Let's just actually create an inline function here. And then we'll call Q free still, but because we want to add some additional logic, we'll just uh, put an inline function here as well so we can do some more things. And what are we going to do? Well, before the player is destroyed, we're going to reparent the camera to the world uh, to the world node. We can do this by calling reparent. And then, well, actually we have to do camera node 2D or camera 2D dot reparent and then get tree dot current scene. That will just grab the world node. And then you can see there's an optional argument here called keep global transform. By default, it's set to true. We actually do want to keep the global transform because that will keep the camera where it was when the player died. Now we can take a hit take a hit, take a hit, and the camera stays in this location as the player is now gone, but it doesn't jarringly jump away. That's gonna be it for this video. A uh, couple simple little things, but definitely helped improve things even more than the last video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and learned something, please like the video, leave a comment down below, if you enjoy my content, subscribe to the channel. Although if you're this far into this video, you're subscribed to the channel. If you're not, why? If you're, if you're, if you're 18 on part 18 of this tutorial series and you're not subscribed, I have to question why. Anyway, subscribe, be sure to hit the bell, and uh, I will see you all in the next video.